You wouldn't believe the magic happened in this little room. It's been decades since that magic turned historic RCA Studio B into the iconic recording home of music titans. Fred Foster didn't know it at the time, but the famed record producer and label owner was helping create the Nashville sound. There's no feeling in the world unless it's maybe like birthing a child. A sound he chased as a young boy living in Rutherford County, North Carolina. When the other kids would be out dancing, I'd be listening to the band. At 17, Foster left home for the nation's capital and started writing songs while working in the food industry, eventually landing a promotions gig at Mercury Records. His ear for unique talent almost ushered in one of the biggest signings in music history, the first time he heard Elvis Presley on the radio. I pulled over, stopped, turned up the volume and said, ho, oh, oh, ho, this is the real deal here. We're I said, Art, please sign him, man. If I had $50,000, I'd sign him. He offered thirty-five. dollars You're going to make tons of money on the first relief. It's a no-brainer. No, it's too much money. Well, RCA paid me. Foster decided to go out on his own, and Monument Records was born. I had to find the... Uh, a song, because without a song, you might as well stay home. I knew what I wanted. I knew I wanted someone who sounded identifiable immediately. It wasn't long before he found it in Billy Grammer. He was very capable of holding an audience. He was a great guitar player. So I called him and said, you want to uh, be the first monument artist? And he said, yeah. The partnership blossomed into Monument's first big hit, a million-selling single. And I feel like travel on. Foster moved his label to Music City and launched the career of another legendary singer-songwriter. He and Roy Orbison went on to make more than a dozen consecutive hits. We work together so well. It's a combination that works, and when you got one that works, don't change. But one of his most well-known pairings came when a young woman named Dolly Parton walked through his door. After about three songs, I said, okay, now your writing is free? And she said, yeah. I said, well, sign with Combine, for the right, and I'll sign you the monument to record. She said, you don't mean it. I said, well, what? what do you mean I don't mean it? And she said, everybody's turned me down. I said, not my problem. I don't care what anybody else did. That unique songwriter first philosophy recently landed him one of the highest honors in country music when he was inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame. He accepted the award last month alongside Charlie Daniels and Randy Travis, all three from North Carolina. The uh, Tar Heel invasion. What do you think that says about North Carolina? Gotta be something in the water. Whether co-writing Billboard hits Good enough for me and Bobby McGee. or pushing the boundaries that defined Music Row, Foster, a trailblazer from North Carolina, credits his humble beginnings with the timeless tunes that composed one of the richest careers in country music. When you look back over your career, what do you want your legacy to be? He was a songwriter's friend.